Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so question two, 2019 was a complex number question. So this complex number, Z1 is equal to two plus I where I squared is equal to one and it's shown on the Argand diagram, okay? So on an Argand diagram in complex numbers, our traditional x-axis is called the real part of the number and the y-axis is the imaginary part. So the, the, the numbers with i are our imaginary uh, part of the number and this is the real part of the number. Okay, so it's over two on the real axis and up to one i on the imaginary axis. And that's how you plot two plus i. A part one, z2 is equal to two times z1. Okay, so z2 is equal to two times z1. Okay, so it's two times and instead of z1, I'm going to put in two plus i. And let's multiply it. Two twos are four, two by one i or two by i is two i. Okay, just the same as you multiply two, two plus x, it, it's the same maths. It's just in a different context. So Z2 is the number four plus two I. Um, so find the value and plot and label it on the argon diagram. So four plus two I would be here and that's my Z2. Okay. Part two. Z1 hat or Z1 bar is the complex conjugate of Z1. Write down the value of Z1 and plot and label it on the Argand diagram. Now, there's a reason they said write down, not calculate, just write down. Okay. The complex conjugate of a complex number is you change the sign of the imaginary part. That is it, okay? So the real part doesn't change sign. It's just the imaginary part. So plus I there would become imagine, or minus I. So the complex conjugate of Z1 is two minus I. Okay, and then to plot that, it's over two and it's down to minus one I. And we know it's the conjugate by the hat that's on top of the Z. Okay, so a conjugate, we use, we use in a lot of things, but one of the big uses for it is in dividing complex numbers. And, and I'm sure I'm gonna get a question on that very soon. So you'll see it in action. Okay, so, so I hope that's okay. Um, there was 10 marks for that. Um, so once you get the hang of it, of the complex numbers and what they are and so on and so forth, and you wrap your head around the real and imaginary parts of the numbers, um, some sections of it are not so bad. Part three, investigate if the modulus of Z2 is equal to the modulus of Z1 plus Z1 hat, okay, or the conjugate of Z1. Okay, so when the two lines are around it, so just like those two lines, you would have come across them in coordinate geometry, those two lines meant distance or length, okay? That's what those two lines mean. That's also what they mean here, okay? But in the context of um, complex numbers, it's basically saying what distance out from the origin, okay? so. That line there, the length of it, is what I would call the modulus of Z1, like that. Okay, so it's it's the distance out from the origin, okay? And we get it using Pythagoras' theorem because we always form a triangle with the x-axis and that is in effect the hypotenuse, okay? Because you'll always have a right angle triangle. So we'll use the distance two there on my triangle and we'll use the distance one, okay? But I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so the question says, investigate if 
the modulus of Z2. So this distance here, so I'm just going to delete off the red one here now so that I don't confuse you. So basically it's saying investigate if this distance here, okay, so that's the modulus of Z2, if that's the same as these two little bits added together, okay? So let me change color. Is it the same as this one added to this one? Okay, so let's investigate, let's see. So the formula that you need, well, I'm gonna say Z is the complex number. x plus y i okay so it's just any real and imaginary number okay so therefore modulus of z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared okay so whatever number is there squared and whatever number is there squared so the i's don't for, form part of it okay so that's what we're going to be doing anytime we see modulus you use this formula so let's do this one in bits. So I would say Z2 was equal to four plus two I. Okay, so therefore the modulus of Z2 is equal to the square root of four squared plus two squared. That's in effect my X, so X squared, that's in effect my Y. Okay, so let's put him into the calculator, the square root of four squared, plus two squared, and I'm getting two root five for that one. Okay, then the question said, um, find the modulus of Z1 plus Z1 bar. Okay, so when you've got two terms here inside the modulus symbol, you have to add these first. So you need an answer for Z1 plus Z2 so that you can put it into this formula, X squared plus Y squared, okay? So let's do that, okay? So Z1 plus Z1 bar, so Z1 was two plus I. Z1 bar was down here, two minus I. Okay, so let's add these together. So how you add complex numbers or subtract is you add reals to reals. So two and two is four. And then you add imaginaries to imaginaries. So plus I minus I actually cancel each other out. So it's just equal to four. Okay, so this is equal to, or I can go four plus zero I if that makes sense. Okay, and it might be easier for you to do that so you can fit it into X squared plus Y squared. So this is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's the square root of 16, which is equal to four. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my two root five and I'm gonna change him to a decimal. I still have him in my calculator. So 4.47. Okay, so are they equal? Is that number equal to that? Well, no, they're, they're not. So what I write down then in maths language is therefore Z2 is not equal to Z1 plus Z1 bar. Okay, so that's how you cope with any of this. And this comes up a lot. You'll see a lot of these type of questions as you go through the exam papers. All right. The next one, part B, show that Z1 equals to two plus one is a solution to the equation Z squared minus four Z plus five. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, I'm gonna show you two ways of doing it. I'm going to first of all solve it, okay? So I'm going to say A is equal to 1, B is equal to minus 4, C is equal to 5. In other words, I'm going to use the minus B formula like I would any other quadratic. Remember, in complex numbers, they call them Zs. 
in algebra, they call them x's, okay? But it's still a, a quadratic equation. So let's put it into the minus b formula. So z in this case is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay? So it's equal to minus b, so minus minus 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, minus minus 4 is 4, plus or minus. Now, if you put this into the calculator, and I want you to do it for me, so put square root, because this is how we always do them, minus 4 squared, minus 4, bracket 1, bracket 5. I know that you will get a maths error, okay? And it has to be a maths error, guys, because this was the whole reason the complex number was, was invented. It was to get around the case where your roots of a quadratic were not real, okay? It was where we had a quadratic just like this one here. And what happened was it never actually cut through the x-axis. And it's only when it cuts through the x-axis that we say it's got real roots. That's what they're called. So whatever are the x values here that it cuts through at, they're what we call real roots. Okay. So because this never cuts through, we describe it as not having real roots. It has what's called complex roots, hence the name complex numbers. Okay. And, and this happens when we get the square root of a negative number, okay? That's how it manifests itself. That's how we know that we're dealing with a quadratic that doesn't cut through the x-axis, okay? So how do we solve it? Well, you put down your square root sign and you don't put your square root sign into your calculator. Once you get that math error, just put this bit in, okay? So bracket minus four squared. So put the whole thing in without the square root sign. And for that, I'm getting minus four all over two ones or two. Okay, so I, I hope that makes sense. The, the bit that's different from a normal minus b formula is the fact that you get a maths error for this because it's a negative number. So just don't put the square root sign into your calculator. Okay, now minus four, I have to explain that. So minus four can be written as the square root of four times minus one. OK, so I'm just splitting out the minus bit from the 4. OK, so that's the same thing as the square root of 4 by the square root of minus 1, because we can break up square root terms. OK, square root of 4, as you know, is 2. Square root of minus 1 is that famous i that we've been dealing with in this question so far. Okay, so the square root of minus four is two i. Okay, so we write this one down as four plus or minus two i all over two. Okay, and you can include this bit in here in between if you wish, okay? It doesn't matter where you do that, but somewhere you have to do the two i bit. Okay, sometimes the question up here tells you that i is equal to square root of minus one, but in many times it gives you the squared version of it. Because you know if you square i, you get i squared. If you square root minus one, so root minus one by root minus one is indeed equal to minus one. And that's what they give you here. They give you the i squared rather than the i. Okay, so just like we would any other quadratic, we're going to split him into the plus and the minus. So I end up with 4 plus 2i all over 2, 4 minus 2i all over 2. Okay, and because there's two terms, you divide each one by 2. So it's 4 over 2 plus 2i over 2. And it's 4 over 2 again minus 2i over 2. OK, I'm just splitting it into its fractions. And so this is equal to 4 over 2 is 2 plus 2 over 2 is 1i or i. 
and this one is equal to 4 over 2 is 2 minus i. Okay, question said show that z1 equals to 2 plus i is a solution. There she is. And that's you showing that it's a solution. Okay, was there another way to do this? Yes, there was. Okay, the other way of doing it is if one of my z values is equal to 2 plus i, and if they're telling me it's a solution, then I should be able to sub in for z. Okay, so let's do that. So sub into the equation if it is a solution, which we know it is because they told us. So instead of z squared, I'll have 2 plus i all to be squared minus 4 times. Instead of z, I have 2 plus i plus 5 equals 0. Okay, so let's multiply him out. I have 2 plus i by 2 plus i minus 4 twos are 8, 4 by i is 4i, plus 5 equals to 0. So 2 by everything in the second bracket, plus i by everything in the second bracket. So 2 twos are 4, 2 by i is 2i, i by 2 is 2i again. Come back to that now in a minute because I have an error there. And then I have plus i by plus i, which is plus i squared. Let me come back to this one because I've just spotted an error. Minus 4 by 2 is indeed equal to minus 8. Minus 4 by i is not equal to plus 4i. It's equal to minus 4i. So apologies for that. Okay, minus 8, minus 4i, plus 5 equals 0. So let's tidy them up. I have 4. These two add up to 4i. Now, instead of i squared, you should never end up with i squared in an equation because you always sub in that minus 1 for your i squared. So I'm going to put in my minus 1 there. My minus 8 minus 4i plus 5 equals to 0. And just to explain how I spotted that mistake, I could see the put plus 4i coming here. I'm expecting everything to cancel. So because I saw plus 4i coming there, and then I saw this was a 4i, and I was kind of thinking they're not going to cancel. And that's how I detected that my signs were wrong. The left has to equal the right if that is a solution to the equation. Okay, so if plus 4i had to cancel with minus 4i, okay? So use things like that to help you if you make um, simple mistakes like I just did. So 4 and 5 is 9, minus 1 is 8, minus 8 is indeed 0. So 0 equal to 0, therefore z equal to 2 plus i is a solution. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our Level 7 in Electronic and Computer Engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress on to the Level 8 in Electronics and Self-Driving Technologies and from there to the Masters. Check out the link below for more information.